Alex, the one thing that you can do right now to generate immediate leads that nobody is doing is... Welcome back to Endless Customers. My name is Alex Winter, and today we are joined by the one and only Marcus Sheridan, author, keynote speaker, partner here at Impact. Welcome back to the show. All right, dude. Ready for this. Ready. We got something really important to talk about today. We're talking about leads, but specifically, we're talking about if your leads have been down. So if you've been trying to like drum up that leads funnel, get more leads in, get better potential customers, but it's not working, what the heck should businesses do? And what happens in those situations to try to like turn the turn the needle in the other direction. Yeah, let me say that there's a lot of companies that are down right now, uh, a lot of industries that are down right now, mm-hmm. just across the board, right? Uh, the good thing about that is there's some pain, and pain usually means innovation. It usually means we're doing things that uh, otherwise we, we might not be doing. And, you know, with, with you know, my job, my career, I get to go around to, to these different industries, and I get to speak to these different companies. I'm seeing what's going on. And uh, let me give you some examples of just some things that I, you know, you know, I know are working in certain industries, and they very well could work in yours too. Um, and as you're listening to this, be just really careful not to immediately say that won't work in our space, uh, because that's that's easy to do, and it's also very lazy. Uh, the the great ones are always saying, "How could I apply this principle to you know to me and to my business?" Yeah. So let me give you a, a perfect case in point. We recently had a uh, concrete pool uh, builder in Arizona who uh, is historically a really large company. And uh, they, they came to us and they said, Hey, industry's down here in Arizona. Uh, We want to uh, get more leads and we like they ask you answer, but we need more leads like right now because we've got this little window where we sell a ton of pools each year. It's like, you know, window of like, busyness. Yeah. That is how it works in, in the swimming pool space. That's an interesting point too, because they ask you answer does take a little time to get traction That's right. and it's worth the investment. But if you need to make moves right now, yeah, you need today. leads right now. Yeah. It, well, and, and <clears throat> we got to be careful though, Alex, because they ask you answer in the producing of content. Mm-hmm. Yes, that takes time, but we have to remember that they ask you answer goes beyond that to it's not just what are they asking and what are they thinking searching feeling saying it's like what's their behavior right what do they want to do okay so in the case of this company i was talking with them and they said so we need to generate these leads like right now <laughs> I said, okay um and looked at their stuff i'm like okay it's all obvious to me what you need to do you need a pricing calculator and this is just not something that you see in the in that gunite concrete pool plaster pool space you don't really see it you certainly don't see it in Arizona. And so they said, all right, let's send it. Let's, let's just do it. And in a, to make a long story short, this is a really, really wonderful company. I love this company They're called Shasta Pools. Uh, they've got this uh, tremendous uh, pricing calculator that they, that they, that they had built. We, we helped them uh, build this, of course. Mm-hmm. But they essentially doubled their leads year over year. And that's a time when, when the industry is down. So like in one month, uh, they they doubled their leads in one month. Doubled in, their yeah, leads. Yeah, yeah. From yeah. So you know, last May versus this May, we had twice as many leads. Sales team is super excited. I went and I spoke with them, and that's just great to see. And I love that. And I love this company. I mean, I just believe in them so much. But that takes visionary leadership, right? Because in order to uh, to, to 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 get more than you've got, you've got to become more than you are, right? Totally. So like in in the context of Shasta, they said, we need to meet the buyers where they are. The behavior is as a buyer, I would like to be able to build and price my swimming pool to a degree to where I'm able to at least feel like I know if I'm in the game or not. So pricing calculators and just self-service tools in general, One of the easiest ways that you as a business right now can generate leads off of your own website and off of the traffic you're getting right now, whether it's paid traffic or whether it's organic traffic, is by pricing tools or self-selection tools, as we call them, um, assessment tools. All these are like self-service where traditionally what would have had to have been done by a human 
uh, interaction can now be done with an interaction that's on your website. It's so yeah. stinking powerful. It's no different than, like, if you went to the uh, Riverpool's website right now, you could take this, uh, essentially it's an assessment tool that allows you to figure out, okay, is a vinyl liner, a concrete, or a fiberglass pool the best choice for me? But this doesn't just apply to, like, swimming pools. Like, let's say I was HubSpot. I had a SaaS product like HubSpot. So HubSpot's got a few different tiers by which they, you know, offer their solution. Sure. Well, they should have a tool on there that helps someone figure out well, what's the right level of HubSpot for me? Now, they don't have that. They really, really should. Come on, HubSpot. Let's go. <laughs> and then what do they got? They've got what most SaaS companies have, which is like this good, better, best, like visual that shows you here's right. what are, you With know, all the different what features are, yeah, and the comparison. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, that's, problem is, most people don't even understand what those, you know, features and all, like all that means. Yeah. It's very, very overwhelming, which is what, leads to talking to a salesperson. But a lot of us don't want to talk to a salesperson until we feel like we're not going to make a mistake, until we feel like we're good and ready. This is like one of the number one ways right now that you can generate leads uh, and get tremendous returns. Almost nobody is doing it. Self-service tools. We built a bunch of them. Um, it's very, very powerful. I actually built one uh, for blue-collar businesses. That's super, it's a pricing calculator tool. It's really, really rad. And it's like the... It's the fastest AI-based pricing estimator that you can put on your website in the world right now. Whoa. You can do it. You can put it on your website in less than 30 minutes. Anybody listening to this? And what it does is it's got a bunch of pre-populated industries with questions that you would ask someone to ultimately be able to give them a, a price for your product or service. Sure. You can even go in there if that industry is not pre-populated you can go in and you can put in your industry and then it's going to say, okay, so based on AI, right? Uh, here's some of the questions that you might ask someone so as to be able to give them a price range, a price estimate. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you can go in and you can customize the questions. You can do all these things. And now all of a sudden, boom, it pops out like this great little tool that you can immediately embed on your site that you start getting leads in 30 minutes. Imagine like getting leads you weren't getting a minute ago, like, like within 30 minutes, with this brand new tool on your site that, that visitors love. And they're like, it's amazing somebody's willing to do this for me. Like any company doing this now could, could use that. It's called priceguy.ai. Okay. And if you're listening to this too, like I don't even, I, I've never showed you this tool, Alex. I don't, I don't no, even know if you like know that I built no, this. the first I've heard of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I worked with his like development team and everything. Yeah. So again, it's priceguy.ai. And if you put in a code Marcus60, you get 60 days for free. I don't even ask you for a credit card. Like, you don't give me your credit card information. There's no opt-in. You just build the tool. Like, no hoops, dude. It's the ultimate user experience. That's amazing. And for those that want to use it, it's $67 a month. Okay. Right? And mark is 60 for the promo code. Don't yeah, mark is 60. You get it, like, 60 days. You don't do anything. You just get to play with it. If you like it, you keep using it. And... You know, at $67, it's like the it's like the most cost-effective lead magnet that you're probably ever going to have or use in your life wow. as a business. And here's the thing with these um, things like pricing calculators and, and whatnot, estimators, right? Remember, it's an estimator, y'all. It's not necessarily, you're not giving them an right. exact price. This don't, isn't the quote. Don't get caught up in that, yeah. oh, geez. <clears throat> We're gonna be we're gonna be stuck to this and burdened to it. We're not yeah, we're yeah. not signing on the yeah, dotted line. You're not putting here. yourself in the corner. Yeah. So you can be the first in your industry to do this. The first for many of the folks that are listening to this right now, that's really, really amazing. So I think that's number one. I mean, that's where you should start and ask yourself, could I have some type of self-service tool on my website? Self-pricing, self-selection, self-assessment, self-configuration, something like that, that allows them to figure this out. B2B, B2C, yeah. this is a really, really huge opportunity for everybody. There's beauty in the simplicity of it too. There really is, and it's effective, clearly. So it's almost yeah. a no-brainer at this point. I don't know why anyone that's owning a business wouldn't even try this or at least experiment with it. Yeah, yeah. It's stunning how few just catch the vision of this, but you know, it's going to happen in your industry. And when it happens in your industry, if, like, if you're watching this, when this happens in your industry, you're going to say, uh-oh, <laughs> Oh no. And then you're going to be in reactive mode, which isn't a good place to be when it comes to sales and marketing. Okay. So that's, that's where I would, that's where I would start. Now, another thing that people have to understand is, is 
paid advertising still works. And it actually works really well. Like, okay. if you need leads right now, you should be doing some type of paid campaign. You just should. Whether it's on Google, whether it's on social, make sure, like, <laughs> now, you might say, well, we don't have the money for that. Well, if you don't have the money for that, you don't have the money for that. But if you're saying, we're not getting enough leads right now, there's few things that are more effective in terms of just like immediacy than turning in on a campaign, testing that campaign, and then, op of course, optimizing it, right? Testing it, optimizing it, mm -hmm. and then watching the conversions come in. You know, you know, once again, at Impact, we got a team that does this. We, if you look at con content promotion and distribution, like the idea that we should just wait for Google or AI or our own means to distribute it, it doesn't always, that doesn't always pay the bills. Right. You know, after all these years, Riverpool still does pay. Why? Because we track it. We know how much revenue it generates and it makes way more money than it loses. So why would I stop doing that? So I can do they ask you answer. I can do paid as well. And that generates revenue. Mm -hmm. So we've got, you know, we've got that in the bag. We do that. It works. It yeah. works. How, how often do you find business owners or, or businesses that are spending money on like maybe traditional advertising techniques and are like, we don't have the money to do paid. And in reality, they do. And they probably need to make a shift towards more effective ways of leveraging their, there, their it, budget. This is actually very surprising to, uh, to a lot of folks. Let me give you an example. I was uh, speaking at an event uh, that was home exterior refinishers, uh, essentially painters, but also like high-end coding companies. Okay, cool. The amount of people that were doing TV in that room was disturbing. There was a bunch of people doing TV. And not, not low budgets. I mean, a lot. Okay. That, to me, is a big-time tragedy. That's one thing that, you know, that form of traditional TV, uh, I, would not, I would not be rolling with that right now if I was you. But I tell you what does work in home improvement, direct mail. Direct mail right now can still slay for you. No kidding. Direct mail today oftentimes costs less than it did 10 years ago, which is hard to believe, but it was really, really competitive. Like, they had a lot of leverage 10, 15 years ago. It was very ago. saturated 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, it yeah. was like one of those things. A lot of these companies hadn't figured out internet marketing yet. There right. wasn't a lot of competition. Everything was outbound marketing. And so it was a lot cheaper, per se, than radio or TV or the yellow pages. So a lot of people were... We wanted to do direct mail. It did work, but it was just way, way expensive. Now it's actually less. You get even less than you spent, you know, 15, 20 years ago. But you can get really great returns because the other side to this is mailboxes are actually pretty empty today. People don't get much mail anymore, right, for the most part, unless it's an Amazon package, right? right. And so because of that, we actually tend to look at our mail, whereas before it's like, we're just, you know, throwing it to the side. So I've seen direct mail really, really effective when it comes to anything to do with like home improvement, mm -hmm. that's good. Or just like some of these general B2C things like car washes, things like that. I mean, those things are effective and they work. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just talking about things that you can do right now, right? Because there's a lot of things that you can do that plant the seed that you nourish and eventually you have crops. But sometimes you just need to go to the grocery store and buy yourself some food. You know <laughs> I, what I'm saying? I hear that, yes. And that means... We're either going to do something like a self-service tool, which can be immediate. We might do paid, which can be immediate. We might do outbound, but smart outbound, which can be immediate, right? All these things, they can produce immediate fruit for those that are just like, we need, we've got this window and we've got to take advantage of this window. Sure. Sure. And it makes sense too, for me on the, on the scale of when you're implementing, they ask you answer and when we're talking about endless customers, because you can have short-term wins with this strategy. Yeah while also leveraging a longer term strategy to really change your content and your marketing and unifying your sales and all that. So that's a really cool point that I think a lot of business owners can entertain. Another question that I have for you that I think is top of mind. When we talk about potential clients, how do we get better leads and better clients? So more qualified ones that are ready to buy and how do we build trust so that the leads that we're getting, not only the quantity is more, but they're better leads that yeah. are easier to convert. So how do I get better leads? Yeah. Well, I, I can tell you, and I'm going to just like look in your eyes here. <laughs> leads are as good or as bad as the messaging that brought them there. If your messaging stinks, guess what? You've probably got 
a lead quality problem. And if you've got great messaging, that's going to coincide nicely with that lead quality. That's how it works. I will have two different companies in the same industry tell me two totally different stories. Our web leads, not very good. Our web leads, they're the best leads we get. What's the difference? Same industry. Well, what's the difference? One of them has really, really poor messaging. Your messaging stinks, so do your leads. The other one is really explicit with their messaging, right? I mean, they just do a great job. Maybe they have things like, you know, cost and price information on their website. So the person has a sense for what they're getting themselves into. Let's give you an example, right? Sure. If you're doing they ask you answer and you're tapped into the questions your buyers are asking, right? The fears, the worries, the issues, the concerns, all those things. And then you're very explicit with addressing those well on your website. I can tell you right now, your lead quality goes up every single time. So that's what we're, that's the game. You know, that's the game. We, we see, we consistently see leads can go up and lead quality goes up for companies that do they ask you answer and they get much better with their messaging. <clears throat> that's why too, what we find when, when people produce uh, like pricing content on their website, they tend to actually get more specific over time, not less specific in what they're willing to say. Why? Because the lead quality goes up. And people do appreciate specificity, right? Yes. It's all in the right context of how you say these things. And so this is, you know, this is like, this is very, very key. It's, it's, all, about, it's all about the messaging that, that we have. I think there's just some other, I, I got to say this one thing though. Sure. I, I, I have a friend uh, recently that, um, he started his own little consulting company and he immediately in like less than a month went from zero to six figures as Whoa. a consulting company. Wow. Okay. So how did, how does that happen? Well, it happened because he did a ton of direct one-to-one outreach with his entire database. He didn't go one to many. He went one to one. Made it personal. Yeah. And then he set up individual calls, had individual conversations. He was really frank, open, honest, and explicit. And suddenly, you know, he's got a six-figure consulting business as a solopreneur. <clears throat> That's balling right there. It's amazing. Four weeks. Four weeks went from zero to six figures. So what I mean by that, that right there is a lost art. Because sometimes we're too scaly with our marketing. And what I mean by that is like, well, if I'm not sending to a big list, I'm not doing it. No, it's like there is so much power sometimes in the individual. Reach out to the individual. Tell them exactly the problem that you might be able to solve for them. Yeah. Let them know we can chat about this if you feel like you might be experiencing that problem. It may or may not be a fit, but here's the problem that I can help you solve right now. If it resonates, boom. You see, but most companies don't do that. Now, in the, in the sales world, that might be called like ABM, like account-based marketing. Right. <clears throat> that is something that is um, not well understood. It's not done by many, but it's one of those things like if you're trying to generate rev right now and you're looking at it from a marketing perspective, you also gotta, you gotta look at it from a, uh, a sales perspective, right? Which is how can we do this and really have quality conversations? Well, you don't oftentimes get the quality conversations you want if you're doing things just to the mass. So you've got marketing that's going on a, on a scale level, right? And they're, they're really just, they've got a much wider net. But then you've got your sales team that has a much smaller net, but they're going a lot deeper with that. Way deeper. And, and with that, now you've got a, a great complementary setup there where you're going to start to find some of the opportunities that you otherwise wouldn't have found. Yeah, no, that makes total sense. It feels like the marketing piece is the awareness and the sales side of it is where you get really granular and yeah. deeper into the conversations and personalization. But to go back to the lead quality problem, yeah. I've never seen a situation where some someone really was truly great at communication, was truly explicit in the way they communicated in terms of the, the, the problem they solve, their ideal client, et cetera, and had a lead quality problem. You just don't see it. Okay. You just don't see it. And so lead quality problem, quality, okay? If, it's, if you're getting leads, but it's a quality problem, no question, you have a messaging problem. You have a transparency problem. 
you have an honesty problem. You have an openness problem, right? It also means that your leadership team is probably not catching the big vision of how buyers think, what they want, right. and, what, and what they're attracted to. So you might be telling them what they want to hear to get their attention, maybe get them to fill out the form. But then as soon as the rubber meets the road, there's like, this stinks. This is no good. Right. Well, we all know what happens when sales teams, do, like the good old, I'm going to convert them. Let me talk to them. I'll make this happen. That doesn't always lead to the best outcomes because they may not be the best fit. And then how's that relationship going to look as they become a client in long term? So yeah. we know where that goes. No bueno. Yeah, no bueno. So how does this apply for B2B? Because I feel like I hear a lot in B2B and I'm stereotyping here, but I feel like it's a lot of handshakes and referral based business. So if B2B companies are having similar problems with leads and lead funnels, what is the does the same rules apply? Well, the same, absolutely. It's just that B2B companies are so caught up in their in their uh, own uniqueness <laughs> that too often they just don't do the things they should be doing, right? Yeah. I mean, if you look at it right now, why do we have this podcast? We have this podcast because it's a lead driver for a B2B organization called Impact, right? Correct. Uh, it also helps like me on a personal level. I'm going to be able to take this content. I can repurpose it. It helps grow my brand. It helps get me in front of audiences. Whether that's a podcast, another podcast, or whether that's a speaking gig, all those people will hear me. They'll say, hey, I'm interested in that thing called They Ask You Answer, or I'm interested in whatever you know Marcus is talking about. They get in our ecosystem. Then they get introduced to They Ask You Answer and Impact, and then they potentially become a client. I mean, the amount of clients that we get just from my speaking gigs is quite significant. It's substantial. In, yeah, in, yeah, in the company. And so this, what we're doing right now matters, right? It does. But we have to do it. We have to be in the game. We have to continue to play the game. I can't let my foot off the gas. I can't stop producing content. I can't stop getting my face out there because the moment I do, this just isn't going to work, right? This is a really, really big commitment. I should be home today in Virginia. I am here in Connecticut right now. I stayed a day after a speaking gig. Why? Because we need to do this. This is a commitment that, that we are in. It's costing us money. It's costing us time. But we understand that we've got this like foundational thing, in our case, called the Endless Customers Podcast. This helps grow an audience from the podcast, but it also helps grow the audiences of the thought leaders that we put on the, on the podcast, not just myself, but our team, right? and because our team is on there, their individual brands grow. And oh, by the way, they just get better, right? Because the more you do this thing that we are doing right now, the more articulate you get, the more effective you are, the better with yeah. your messaging you are, right? And so because of that, you know, people ask me all the time, how do you do everything on one take? It's like it happens on one take most of the time because I've said these things thousands of times. It's like I'm practicing every day. I mean, I make Steph Curry look lazy when it comes to like my jump <laughs> shot called, called in this case, communication, right? I, I don't actually think I make him look lazy. I think he makes me look lazy. I'm, I'm picking up what you're putting picking up. But you know what yeah. I'm saying, right? It's like, yeah. it's all about, it's all about like a prolific amount of reps. And we're putting ourselves in a position here to get the reps. Most B2B companies aren't doing that thing, right? They're, they're not putting it, they're not putting in the time. So what are they not doing? They're certainly not, uh, probably, they probably don't have a podcast. They're not producing regular video. They're not doing long form and short form video. So again, it's not, it's, it's just not doing all these things that are getting themselves out there. A lot of them are still doing things on a traditional level. Uh, they're blaming things like, hey, I'm a referral based business. Newsflash, every business is referral based. Guess what? McDonald's is referral based. There's no such thing as a business that isn't referral based. You know those underground businesses in New York City that you got to be like really special to get into, like that back room? Referral based. Everything. 100%. Show me one business. Any, anyone. I'm, I'm ready for it. Show me one business that isn't referral based. Stop saying you're referral based. You're, you're a business. That's what you are. Of course, referrals matter. Now, if you say we're referral based, as in, ha ha, look at us, that means we're too lazy to do all this other marketing, and it just so happens that the only way we're getting leads is through referrals. But you're not referral based, you're a business. Right. That's how this works. That's how this game, 
when it just drives me crazy. People say, you don't understand. This is a referral-based industry. No, it's called a bunch of lazy marketers that aren't thinking like the buyer. They're not thinking like the consumer. And because the only way they've gotten leads up to this point in time is referrals, they call it a referral-based business. Get out of here with that. Right. How much opportunity could you be potentially missing by, by having that mentality, right? Well, 100%. And I saw it for years in the swimming pool industry. I heard that game. And that's why we took over the industry. Because while this dude's over here saying, yeah, man, we're referral-based, and he's doing his 10 pools a year, we said, we're going to take over the world, and we end up doing hundreds of pools a year, and it changed my entire life. And oh, by the way, referrals matter to us too. You see, yeah. that's table stakes. You give great service, you make the client, you make the customer happy, and you get referrals. That's business though. There's nothing special about it. No. And certainly nothing unique. Mm -hmm. if you do that good, gets me fired up. I can see you're fired up, but it's, it's so true what you're saying because if you do good business, people are going to talk about their good experience with other people, and that's... That's referral-based business. Name. Yeah. <laughs> That's how okay. it goes. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cracked a code on that one. Yeah. Blew my mind. Yeah. Yeah. So can we talk a little bit about like really getting granular and painting the picture for leads? So a little bit about seasonality, but then also what to look out for. Like I have here like measuring how much your leads are worth. How much is a deal worth? Are you paying your agency too much money? Should you take it in-house? Like what are some of these granular things specific with leads that we can give some advice for business owners and CEOs and people out there? Yeah, I mean, like, like, cost per, like, you know, acquisition, like, these yeah. things are, are big positives to measure. Mm -hmm. This is why I can say I will continue to do Google ads, let's say, with river pools, even though we get a lot of leads from an organic perspective, because I track how much I spend, I track how many leads it generates. I track how many of those leads convert into an actual um, sales appointment. I track how many of those convert into an actual customer. I track the total revenue that comes from all those folks. Wow. So, you know, if I'm spending, uh, you know, let's say this year, I might spend 50 grand, right? It's not a big deal to me, though. If I do, you know, 1.5 million off of that 50 grand, I'll play that game. Who wouldn't? And that's probably like where we're going to be, somewhere around that, somewhere around there, right? Very nice. So it's like, why would I not play that game? Yeah. I'm going to be in that game. Huge ROI. Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, sometimes in that whole inbound content space, people act like paid is the enemy. Like paid is not the enemy, right? The enemy is that you go broke because you're not doing the things that you need to do as a business to ensure that you've got positive cash flow and that you're generating leads and sales that you need to generate. So I think, you know, I think that's a, you know, that's a metric that is really, really, ma that matters. That's, you know, very, very important. Mm -hmm. I don't obsess about a lot of others. You know, I still uh, think a lot about the amount of content uh, leads consume on your website versus like specifically what one, one metric that I'm really interested in is you take all your leads and you say, how much content did the leads consume versus the leads that turned into customers. Yeah. And there's always a really big delta between those two, right? And so like with with like with river pools, you know, our typical like lead might consume 5 that doesn't buy, but might consume 35, 40, 50 pages that does buy. Right? So that's a really really big difference. Huge difference. And so this is why like lead scoring in general is 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 quite helpful. It's pretty sad, though, how few companies even have lead scoring set up. There's a lot of companies that have HubSpot, they got Pardot, they got whatever, mm -hmm. and they still haven't set up lead scoring. Pretty crazy, right? That is pretty crazy. There's a lot of companies that have those tools, and the sales team doesn't actually look at the lead behavior before they reach out to the prospect, which is pretty sad, too. Which is, I mean, to me, I can't even start to understand that. I mean, that's free info to help you do your job better. Why oh, you? man. I mean, it's just like tells you every every piece of content they consume is a story about that person. It right. says what their hot buttons are, you know, and, and, and you know, what they're interested in. And and it, it paints a picture, right? And so as a salesperson, I, I, want, I want to see as much as, 
of that picture as possible. Mm -hmm. And so that's the type of stuff that I look at outside of that. you know, I, I leave it to some of the data nerds, but you know, those are the things I'm into. Totally. And for, for people that have an agency that are doing this, I feel like sometimes there's a lot of like, I don't want to call them vanity metrics, but they, they'll be like, Oh, you had this many impressions. Isn't that amazing? And when you, just to your point that you were just talking about impressions are good because that does contribute towards your overall goals of like attracting leads. But just because someone sees it doesn't mean they're interacting with it. doesn't mean that they're going to the next step of maybe checking out your website or whatever funnel you're trying to pull them towards. So how do you look at that too and give advice for people that maybe are outsourcing this to an agency? Yeah, this all goes back to what's the goal of the campaign, right? And, and, and things like things like impressions or even clicks that don't, you know, turn into an action. They're more relevant today than they were just a few years ago, though, mm -hmm. because all these things are signals for AI, right? And so sometimes you are saying, I'm going to uh, create a campaign, just like I might create a, a short form video. And my goal is virality. That's it. I want to create awareness, extremely top of funnel or not even in the funnel at all. I want to create signals, especially for AI to say, hey, pay attention to this company. But it's really not designed to drive revenue in that moment, right? It's a very long-term play. It's a big brand, if you will, brand awareness play. Mm -hmm. But then I might create a short video, like, you know, some something on YouTube shorts, that is meant for something more bottom of the funnel, something that's very they ask you answer, something that's specific, something that shows up in search, especially because, you know, those those YouTube shorts are, are popping up in search results all the time now, and they're really trying to push those because they're trying to grow that platform so much. And so that's the type of thing that you just want to keep in mind as you're, you know, as you're thinking about, okay, how do I continue to spread this net? And, you know, what are the things that matters? And, you know, impressions versus, you know, actual... Um, you know, actual clicks to conversions, et cetera. Like that's the, that's some of the stuff that I'm, I'm thinking about these days. It's funny how my opinions have changed. I used to think viral, virality was like the dumbest thing. It just made no sense. And in many ways, it didn't really make much sense. But today, it, it, is, it is something that is much more important. The other side to virality is when virality becomes this great social proof. So if I create a YouTube short, let's say, and maybe it's not designed for my main customer, but it's great for awareness, and it gives me 20,000 subscribers, which has happened before, like on one short. Well, wow. those 20,000 subscribers is a social proof mechanism for those that see the channel thereafter and says, well, 20,000 people can't be dumb. Why would they subscribe, right? right? It's no different than if I'm looking at Yelp and I see that it's, you know, 4.7 stars. There's a big difference between if five reviews were put in at 4.7 versus 2,000. Big right? difference, yeah. Big and difference. I'm the type of guy that looks at Yelp before I go out anywhere. And I'm constantly going out places because I travel, right? That's what I do. So I enjoy sure. looking at Yelp. You get 2,000 reviews. I always say it out loud. Eh, not many people can't be wrong, right? right? And generally, that is the case, right? And so it's the same thing. That's a social proof mechanism. And so I think these, these mechanisms, these signals, again, it's a signal. Sometimes it's a signal to AI. Sometimes it's a signal to the world, but they both, they, they, they have their influence. You want to know that going in so you know really what your, what your target is. And this should be agreed upon by leadership too because if they don't know and they're thinking, hey, this is supposed to equate to revenue and fast, and you're out there popping out viral videos that are building the brand, but they're not really meaning quick revenue, well, then um, you're, you're probably going to have some discord within the organization. Yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense. And 20,000 subscribers off of one short. That's one short. That's 20, incredible. 20,000. Yeah. yeah. Talk about put new potential leads. And your sales team would have been pumped to hear something wow, like that. Wow. That was I like a know. wowza. <laughs> that was crazy. Great insights, Marcus. Great insights. So any closing thoughts here for leads specifically and how businesses can get more leads before we, uh, before we wrap well, up? Well, I would just say you can't do things like you've always done them. Um, I was talking to some agencies this year, some web development companies. I said, what's one thing that you're doing that you haven't done in the last five years, but you're doing now to generate leads? Every single one of them in the room said events. They're doing events. They're okay. speaking at events. 
Um, they're showing at events. It's just they, they're, they're being very strategic with the events that they're at. Mm-hmm. And these were like Drupal companies that I was talking to. So, so web dev companies. Okay. They're doing events. They weren't doing events three years ago. They didn't have to do events. But they're doing events today. So you have to evolve with how you're doing your lead gen, right? Your demand gen. Like you, and you can't be above something. And you've got to say, all right, how can I have more conversations? If that means one-to-one reach out, that's what it means. If that means events, that's what it means. If that means paid, that's what it means. But don't just stick to, well, I'm only going to do they ask you answer. Well, sometimes that's not enough, right? right? Like as in the traditional content marketing version of it. Mm-hmm. That's not enough. Remember, part of they ask you answer is the, is the they, it's like how they think how they behave, where they are, et cetera, right? Yeah. And so if they're asking you to be at the event, go to the event. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Absolutely. Right? It's not just about the next blog article or video that you're going to pop out, right. right? So go beyond that. Otherwise, you're missing the mark of the whole thing. Absolutely. Couldn't agree with you more. And I think, too, for businesses, if you can get out of your lane a little bit, out of your industry, I think you'd be pleasantly surprised at what other industries are doing and how it can inspire and affect what you do in your industry and with your business. Yeah, the great ones tend to not look for the inspiration within their space. Right. They're going outside of their space. Yeah. And um, and it's it's wild. You're like, but that shows you right away that they've got this open mindset, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Whereas there's a bunch of folks that would say, I don't think that would work in my space. Again, the great ones, they go outside of their space and they say, what's the principle that I'm seeing here? How could I apply this to my business? I love it. Marcus, if people have follow-up questions or want to pick your brain about this topic, how can they get in touch with you? Uh, best way to find me is on LinkedIn, right? Uh, Marcus at MarcusSheridan.com. That's my email address. If you got questions, hit me up. I will answer. People are surprised all the time. Man. And I get a lot of questions, but they're always like, I can't believe you actually took the time to answer this. I'm like, yeah. Of course I'd do that. He's very active on LinkedIn and on all the socials and everywhere. So thank you for being on the show. Appreciate your time, Marcus. And for everybody out there watching and listening, this is Endless Customers. I'm Alex Winter. See you on the next episode.